Hi my little honeybees, whether newbie or oldie, welcome to the Honeybee Happy Channel. Hello everybody. Welcome back. Um, today I'm going to be um, kind of decorating up a little bit in here. Uh, and you guys will be able to see me setting up some kitties to make sure we don't have a mouse problem up here in my little skybox. And uh, setting up a little wine cart and maybe a... Um, hot cocoa or coffee cart, I'm not really sure yet, um, a table, I should say, um, and um, then I'm going to be doing a little discussion on self-love again. Uh, this time, you know, just doing a little checklist for you to check in on to make sure uh, that you're taking care of yourself, um, at least what I do. Um, so yeah, I'm, I got some kitties from John, uh, 50 Linden Friday, I think, uh, so I'm going to put them up here, so I'm going to open up, um, my little box of kitties and see what we all have. <laughs>
kitties are put up and everything's looking okay. The wine cart is out. I decided not to have the coffee cart. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, today is just basically for, uh, I'm going to discuss self-love and it's basically just checking in with your basic needs. Now remember, a need is something we all require for our well-being. It's non-negotiable. It's things we cannot do without, basically. And sometimes life gets so busy we forget about meeting our own needs. Um, you need to keep checking with yourself to make sure you are meeting those basic needs that you need. <laughs> Um, this is how I journal out um, a checklist to help me envision a picture of my current lifestyle. And I write out questions in my journal, then I honestly think on them, um, think about them, and um, meditate on them, and write my thoughts down in my journal. The questions that I ask myself are quite simple, you know, nothing really fancy or special. But I ask myself, do I usually get six to eight hours of sleep? Have I been lately? Um, have I been eating something fresh and unprocessed every day? I ask myself, do I allow time in my week to be out in nature, like going for a walk or just being outside, going to a park? No matter how short of a time it is, I write in my journal the answers to all of these questions. Do I get enough sunlight, especially in the winter time? I reevaluate these questions basically weekly or monthly, depending. I ask myself, do I drink enough water? Um, I put in like um, trackers in my journal, you know, where I could track how much water I've been drinking every day, at least eight glasses, eight cups, eight 16 ounces <laughs> or more. Depending, if you're exercising or out in the, the heat a lot, then you be, need to be drinking more. Or if you're sick. Do I see my gynecologist or my family doctor at least once a year? I got to check in with that, you know, make sure I'm taking care of my health. Uh, do I see my dentist every six months? Got to check in with that. These are just basic needs, you know? Do I know enough about my body and health needs? You know, weekly or monthly, check in with yourself to make sure you're feeling right, your mental, emotional, physical. You know, if something doesn't feel right, you need to seek somebody, a professional. Do I get regular sexual thrills? Well, I got to make sure I check in with that, make sure I'm taking care of myself and feeling loved, not only by others, but by myself. Do I feel I'm getting enough fun exercise? Not just something that, oh, I got to do this again, but dancing, you know, uh, jogging on the treadmill to some ambient, like an ambient walk or an ambient run or walk through a city, you could turn you could put the YouTube up and, you know, see about that, if that makes your exercise a little bit more fun. Doing, you know, walking with friends, you know, stuff like that. And I keep saying, you know. <laughs> I ask myself, am I hugged and touched, touched amply, you know, enough? Am I, am I getting what I feel is is love by being hugged enough or, you know, hugging others enough. 
Then I also have to look at do I make time for my friendships to develop them more? To strengthen them? Do I nurture them? Do I have friends I can call on when I'm down? Friends who will really listen and not tell me what to do or even have an opinion really, but just to listen to me? Can I honestly ask for help when I need it? That's a good one to ask myself frequently. If I need help, how can I ask for help? Do I regularly release my negative emotions? You can do that in journaling. You can do that in ritual. You can do that in prayer. You can ask a friend if they'll just listen to you. Do I forgive myself when I make mistakes? Need to make sure that I have that available. Um, do I do things that give me a sense of fulfillment, joy, and purpose? I write down those uh, things that do in my journal. Is there abundant beauty in my life? Do I allow myself to see beauty and to bring beauty into my home or office? Do I make time for solitude? To just be alone? Am I getting daily or weekly spiritual nourishment through prayer, um, affirmations, reading affirmations, uh, doing rituals? And can I remember the last time I laughed until I cried? When was that? And how can I bring that back into my life? Journal on that. And last, do I ever accept myself for who I am? Make sure I always am doing that, not letting others bring me down or make me feel bad about who I am or what I do. These questions remind me to help uh, or to keep checking up on how I am currently caring for myself. I often ask myself, what do I need to better care for myself right now? Thinking on this question helps me to slow down when I am feeling tense or just plain old rotten, and to take a few moments to think on these questions. It also helps activate my intuition and helps guide me toward developing ways to nurture myself. I also jot down these ideas in my journal. Those are just some ways of treating, treating yourself with self-love, you know, checking in with yourself and making sure you are being good to yourself and getting what you need, which are your basic needs in life. Um, Later on today, I will be, uh, I believe, taking a trip with my bestie to a museum I saw in somebody else's video. And then uh, tonight we're going to relax and kick back and watch another one of the YouTubers I am subbed to. So stick around for that. are now at the Vorden on Fancy Decor. I'm going to move the, uh, sorry about the lag because it's going to be really laggy. There's, there's people here. Uh, there's also no voice. <laughs> so 
you'll be hearing just me. Um, but we're at Fancy Decor in the Vorden, Vorden, sorry, Art Museum, which I saw on a YouTuber's channel. Uh, I will try to remember to link down below. Um, so, okay, <laughs> I have to talk to Whimsy in the chat area to let her know that we can go now to the Vorden. Okay. Um, we'll have to see where it is at. Uh, I have never been here before, so I really uh, do not know. And here we come up to the Vorden. Vordun or Vordun. Um, and, uh, whoa. So much leg, so much leg. Okay, and here we are. Museum and... Welcome to the Vorden Museum and Gallery. Accompanying HUD will automatically attach to your screen after you have accepted the experience key. Where's that? Now I see I have to remove all this stuff. Uh, no cost to join the group. You've been added to the group. Uh, key after you have accepted the experience key. I don't even know how to accept an experience key. <laughs> Now, where, where should we go? Let's see. Whoa. Oh, come on. Uh, common grounds. Well, that looks like a restaurant area. Oh, okay. Whee! Maybe over here. Let's try over here, over here, over here, over here, over here, over here. <laughs> yes, I'll keep repeating myself. <laughs> okay, so what do we do here? Nothing? Something? What do we do? Anything? It doesn't look like it. Okay. Um, brochure? Turn. Uh, uh, okay. The word of my mission is free, but you're going to, yeah, okay. I will think about donating as soon as I can figure out what the heck I am doing. If we can find the HUD, I don't know, because I just told her I don't know what we're supposed to do yet. <laughs> What's over here? Wow, they have a lot of supporters. <laughs> they have a lot of supporters. Sorry, I'm just re repeating everything I'm saying. <laughs> Um, there's the bathrooms, and there is a, a, uh, uh, key. Object. Okay, yes. Oh. Okay, the HUD is a, this HUD is, uses audio commentary, so please toggle your sounds on. Uh, camera, blah blah blah, blah community, blah, 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 early click stream, but okay. If you wish to end audio commentary, click the green button. Hmm? Okay, over okay. here, if you click this box, the audio guy box. <laughs> I. Oh my god, someday. Okay, I need to figure out if I can move this HUD. Edit. 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 Thank you. 
and there is the HUD but I want it where I can kinda see it without it being in the way of the chat Dwink, dwink, dwink. Okay. So what number are we on here? Um, oh, that's so pretty. What number are we on? Oh, goodness. <sighs> yeah, okay. John Paul Oil Museum 05. Okay. So for that, we press 05. Oh yeah, my sounds. Wee 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 wee. Up. Oh, why am I lagging like this? So sad. Um. 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 Goddess of the Moon, oh, Jesus. the Forest, and the Hunt. <laughs> Jean Marc Nazia <laughs> depicted her seated in front of a dramatic sky oh, and barren landscape, oh. delicately holding a bow. Oh, the sitter of this portrait, a member of the Parisian society, whose literary salon was a popular meeting place for the most noted people of her day, appears as Diana, goddess of the moon, the forest and the hunt. Jean-Marc Natia depicted her seated in front of a dramatic sky and barren landscape, delicately holding a bow and arrow, wearing a revealing white chemise low on her shoulders and wrapped in an exotic leopard skin. In 18th century, it was fashionable for aristocratic women to have their likeness made into the guise of mythological or historical roles. Natia, one of the leading portraitists of his day, specialized in these flattering allegorical portraits. During his career, he painted portraits of most of the circle of Louis XV and Madame de Pompadour in either traditional or allegorical. Um, I guess Whimsy had to go do something. Uh, for a few minutes, so, yeah, I thought she had time to do this, but I guess, uh, she'll, when she returns, she'll, she'll continue, maybe? Okay, so next picture is this one, I uh, hope we're not gonna bump into her here, trying to get around her, there we go. All right, so this one is the next picture. I know I got it kind of blocked with other things, and my screen probably isn't the best. <clears throat> so I probably won't punch all of these. You know, you guys aren't going to want to see it or hear them all. Um, but this is just an idea. On uh, this is O one. This picture here, very pretty. So that's O1, and I'm gonna see if I can get that to work. Once I can figure out what the heck I am doing. <laughs> O1. And if what they s talk about comes up in the uh, nearby chat also when it loads. Which it could take a while for mine. Um, hello? Says right sits a sword, which is a symbol of punishment. To the left sits prudence, holding a serpent, which is often a symbol of prudence itself. What is immediately striking when zooming into the picture are the white spots that sharp randomly at many places. This aspect was not a because of the additional factor of climate instability. Since its completion in 1662, the painting has been hanging in the city hall at today, Royal Palace. This climate paint layer flaked. The canvas was deformed and mold grew. Because of this alteration, many restorations took place over the centuries and most recently in the 1980s. At this occasion, the paint losses were filled with white fillings and the fillings were retouched with paint. This was done in the most illusionistic way so that the image would be optically complete again. The techniques used to accomplish this restoration have deteriorated and a couple of years ago, the paint used for retouching has started to flake away, uncovering the white filling present underneath. The white spots are the obvious material
here, a little something about her. Is that pretty? Oh, I love this the clothing and the detail in this painting. Oh, so pretty. Oh, what's your number, lady? Huh? What's that number? It's a little bit more. Um, O oh three. Okay, let's position you where we can kind of see you a little bit. And do O oh three after I click out of these people. Do that O oh three. Let's see if it comes up. Glimmer in effect. backdrop for her figure, while the right half of the painting provides a distant, unobstructed view of her lands. A pale beige shawl trim wraps loosely around her back and shoulders, and dainty white slippers emerge from underneath her elaborate blue satin gown. Her fashionable... So now you're talking of her fashion. This large painting stands out as a remarkably loose and freely painted example. He conveyed a sense of immediacy in the large sweeping brushstroke. ...of blue and white paints create an illusion of shimmering, rustling fabric. Small dabs of white and gold paint applied to the shawl lend it a rich, glimmering effect. Okay, we're Ready? going to be watching, I think her name is Lida Minx, or Lida Minx, Lida Minx, and um, she's had her YouTube channel, excuse me, for like two years, 
Uh, her last video was two months ago. She's doing pretty good because she has 262 subscribers. Her channel, she has mostly uh, 50 Linden Friday videos, but she has done holiday videos like um, Christmas vlogging and Halloween vlogging and a few other things like uh, channel, uh, channel, oh my goodness, challenge videos. Uh, today I'm going to be playing a one of her uh, Halloween videos because, well, Halloween season. <laughs> so I I believe that her videos are um, inspiring, informative, and have a fun twist to them. So um, during my video of her video. When I edit, I will clip out some so it's not so long for you guys. But um, let me try to bring up my YouTube. <laughs> and there it is. It's a vlogoween day 22. She did the whole month. Um, I would definitely check out her her uh, channel if you haven't already. This one is from October 22nd of 2018 with herself apparently <laughs> in second life so do you have the link whimsy just let me know when you want to click all right we can start it now okay click <laughs> Oh, she's bloody. I'm still on her. Oh, the beginning <laughs> of her show. Howdy, my sassy gals, and a welcome I guess back I to my channel. That, okay. If you're new here, hi. Right. Hello, I'm, my name's Lydia. You I can just stay a while. It is Vlogoween Day Sometimes because when you 22. copy and paste, it copies it and pastes exactly where you left off at. It is the 22nd of October. Yeah. Um, now, I know I said today I would show you the decorations of the house, but I wound up not getting it done last night. I'm going to try to get it done tonight. Sounds like me. <laughs> operative word being try. Um, as soon as I get it done, guys, there will be a tour of the decorations that I do. Um, but I figured today I would do a real life story time of some of the things that I've gone through in my life. So, um... D quick disclaimer, um, yes, I believe in the paranormal, yes, yes. I believe in ghosts and yes. spirits and hauntings, yes. um, <laughs> no, none of this is a joke and none of this is a story, uh, what I'm going to talk about today, um, I will, however, <laughs> tell a couple of spooky stories closer to Halloween, but I figured today <laughs> I would do a real life story what? time, um, so please be kind in the comments, okay? So She's let's not see. Alone in her um, let me show you what my <laughs> costume. The hair that I'm wearing is from Mina. It is from the arcade. It is Mina's collab with Salt and Pepper for the arcade. The Salt and Pepper made an outfit to where you can turn into a zombie if you walk over a hydrant or over a air vent, and then when you walk through the hydrant, you become normal again. Um, I just bought the hair thinking that would be cool. Um, found this pretty cheap on Marketplace, so I got the red packs. Um, like, it makes me look like a zombie, right? Yeah. So. But anyway, getting into the story time that I wanted to tell you after I take, you know, 30 minutes to talk about my outfit and my backdrop. Uh, <laughs> check out Facebook and my, um, right. I said Instagram, but I don't. I have an Instagram, I just don't post on there. Flickr. Check out my Facebook and my Flickr. I have a, a beautiful picture with this backdrop today. And go check out Anxiety. If you're in, your, in their group, go grab this group gift. It is definitely worth it. You get this scene, which I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see the entire scene. You get this scene, which is pretty neat. And then you also get each individual headstone. Uh, so you can make your own graveyard if you wish. Uh, you know, if you wanted to dot them around your yard for decoration, things like that. It's pretty neat. So go on down to Anxiety and check that out. All right, we're going to get into story time. So when I was younger, I had an experience. I was, I would say I was probably around 10. I kept seeing I, what I thought was things out of the corner of my eye. 
you know, sometimes when you walk in a room, you see like a shadow or something. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of ten, it's just your eyes playing tricks on you. It's, it's actually something else when you look at it straight forward. And then, uh, then you know, you're like, oh, well, it was, you know, it just create, created a, a different shadow when you saw it from the side. I, I thought that's what I kept seeing. I kept seeing this, and then when I looked straight forward, there was nothing there. Ooh, shadow okay. people. Mm -hmm. This must just be, you know, yeah. what they're talking about. I kept seeing it, and I kept seeing it, and I kept seeing it, and I I was not, when I was younger, the type that I could, I didn't watch horror movies, I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't like a scaredy cat per se, um, I wasn't easily spooked by things, but I didn't watch a lot of horror movies at that time because, mainly because my mom wouldn't let me, <laughs> um, so it, it wasn't that, I just, I would have the same reoccurring dream every night the something dream was right. slightly different every night but it was the same mm. basis there was something chasing me now there's a lot of people who have that dream and it's supposed to signify something in your life and I don't know what it was supposed to be signifying at that time but it just it was the same reoccurring dream that there was so, something chasing me and I, I slept with the radio slightly on it was mm -hmm. very low volume and when I woke up, my radio was off. So I thought, well, my, maybe Mama came in here and turned it off because it was bothering her or something like that. Um, my mom slept with the TV on, but she didn't have any sound to it. She muted it. So I was like, okay, well, that's strange. But, you know, it's, it's a normal practice for my mom to turn my radio off if it bothers her. So I didn't think anything of it. I went to the bathroom. I come back to my room. And now, like, like any little kid, I had little silly little fears like... One of my fears was something was going to get me out from under the bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I would turn my light off and jump from where my light was into my bed. So I did that again. I, you know, turned on my light, checked everything. Everything was fine. I was fine. Okay, I've come back from the bathroom. I've checked everything. Nothing in my house seemed to have woke me up. So it must have been the dream. And okay. I think, Whatever. okay, it's dark in the house. I don't hear any noise. It's got to be that thing that happens to me all the time where you see a shadow out of the corner of your eye, you turn and face it, and it's not there. So I look, and it's off to my left, which is the inner part of my room. Because to my left was the, the rest of my room, and to the right was my door and my closet door. So if I was going to see a shadow, it would be coming from the right. Where I saw this was the left, so that was the inner part of my room. And there was toys and things all over the floor. I was a typical kid. I was messy. <laughs> okay. I was lazy as crap when I was a kid. <laughs> I never cleaned anything unless mama took something away and then I had to clean it. Okay. But now this is all going through my brain as a 10 year old child. Okay. So logically it's probably one of those things where it's like, oh, I, there's something there and it looks like a figure and it's not. So I turn to look and it doesn't go away. And now it's not solid. You can see through it. But it's just standing there. There's no movement. It doesn't look like it's breathing. Okay, cool. So logically, I think if I turn the light on, it'll go away, right? So I did my typical routine. Get up, turn the bedroom light on, go down the hallway, go to the bathroom, turn that light off, get back to my bedroom, turn my light off, jump in my bed. Okay, well, I'm back in bed. And this particular night, like I said, the dream had been really, really intense. Uh, really bad. And I lay there. And I'm expecting to see the shadow. And I do. Except for this time, it's not out of my peripherals. It's not on the side. <sighs> it's not to the left. It's not to the right. It's a dead center at the end of my bed. So I can't move. I can't. I can't scream. I can't make any noise. Nothing. Just paralyzed Shadow fear. Shadow people. And that lasted, it felt like forever to me, but probably a couple of minutes. Her speaker's going or something. Her mic. And then it went away. That. And she did the whole typical mom thing. Here's monster spray. It was actually just water. Here's, you know, a teddy bear that'll help you. He'll fend off anything that you need. And I felt okay the first I'd say week back in my room. But then one night again I had that dream. 
and it was a really bad dream again. And I woke up at 3 o'clock on the dot again. Except for this time when I woke up, I didn't see anything. I felt like something was holding down me in the down. hallway. And I got about halfway down the hallway and I felt a hand on my shoulder. My mom was in her room. I saw the TV flickering. My mom was in her room. I felt a sh hand on my shoulder and I turned around. And standing in the hallway behind me was a full-on apparition. But I did later find out that there were other people in other apartments. Now it wasn't an, it was a one-story apartment. So all the, all the apartments were on the fur on the, f the ground level. So it wasn't an up uh, apartment. But all the apartments were on ground level, and I did find out that other people had similar experiences to mine. And um, and it would be the same time every night, anywhere between 2 and 3 in the morning. Which is you know, supposed to be the haunting hour. Most people have their paranormal experiences at, in between those times. And, uh, please excuse the landmark that I've gotten like three times already. Um, mm -hmm. But... There were other people that had that same experience with the same type of spirit. Um, start as a shadow and then eventually they would see a full on full bodied apparition. And uh, you know I, I kind of did some research on the outlying areas and things. And there was a cemetery about it, a mile from my house. And I was like there's no way. There's no way that a, a ghost from that cemetery came down to our apartment area and haunted it. There's no way. <laughs> he never um, <laughs> But it did have some type of correlation to it and I guess in my mind that's what I had made it. It was like, oh, it must have been a spirit from down there and it was just haunting everybody. I don't know. It was just, it was very scary and very creepy. I don't know. Maybe it was real, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. But anyway, I've got more mm -hmm. stories, more things, and I'm going to do a couple of creepypastas as well. Now, of course, I will let you know when those are coming, because those will be fictional. Uh, those are somebody's imagination. <laughs> um, I want to do a couple of uh, the kind of well-known creepypastas, maybe. Oh, creepy pasta. And maybe a couple that are off the wall. But uh, keep an eye out for that on my channel. If you, if the button down below is red, and I found this out today, sometimes YouTube will unsubscribe you from people. So check your subscriptions sometimes. I was unsubscribed from one of the YouTubers because I kept going, why am I not getting the notifications that they're putting videos up? Are they not putting the videos up anymore? And come to find out, I was unsubscribed from that person. So if you haven't subscribed already, go down there and hit that little button button and make sure you hit the bell to get the notifications of when I put up stupid videos like this <laughs> um, and I am I, like I said I'm doing the entire month of October for vlogween and then in the month of December I would do a, be doing vlogmas so I'm super excited about that but we're not going to talk about that right now we're going to get out of here and I'm going to catch you on the flip side and stay spooky because that's what we do around here Lida, I think that's how you say it. Lida Minx. And this video was back October 22nd of 2018. So did you like it? Yeah. Well, it reminded me of like stuff that I went through, you know, growing up. Mm -hmm. I know you uh, saw shadow people and I've uh, dealt with spirits all my life. Um, I can't even remember not ever dealing with a certain 
type of I thing. I haven't re- What? I haven't recently experienced anything, so that's pretty good. <laughs> I do on and off. Um, I think it all depends upon your intuition, you know, how open you are. Uh, if you have ESP, uh, a sixth sense, you know, it's it's real to me. So when she talks about it being real to her, you know, I don't feel so all alone. <laughs> you know, because I, I believe in that kind of stuff. I do believe in, in spirits, and I don't believe that all spirits are negative, you know, because, hey, you know, we've had family members that, I mean, there's good people out there that pass away too, so it's not all just negative. And when I say spirits, in my belief, it's it's an energy from the previous soul that was there. So the dark side, the alien. <laughs> I found it interesting. I find her uh, a lot of her videos interesting i i want to watch more of them and see how you know she's done her videos i like watching videos because they inspire me to create my own videos um you know something from long ago you can do nowadays more up to date that you know uh, somebody had done that's true yep that's true yep so i hope I'm, you guys I'm... oh go on Right, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> well, did you have anything to say about it anymore? Stuff? No. Nope. Okay. Um, all right, guys. I find her videos, as I said before, pretty inspiring, informative, and fun. And very interesting. Um, she, like I said, has 262 subscribers. She's been going two years now. Her last video was two months ago, um, and like I said, she does a lot of 50 Linden Friday videos, the holiday videos, and challenge videos, and a few others mixed in there. Again, it's Lida, I think, or Lida, or Lida, uh, Lida, I think, <laughs> Minx. Oh my goodness, I'm going to totally slaughter her, her um, <laughs> name. But yeah, I will link her channel in the description along with um, Quincy Robbins that uh, that showed what she did with her uh, skybox that I showed earlier in the video. Uh, if I could find it, <laughs> um, that or I'll just link her channel and you can look through all her videos and find find that also and um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video this vlog um, I know it was different from the others a little bit but um, yeah um, so I'm gonna say bye bye and thank thank you whimsy for joining me oh uh, you're welcome so okay Is guys it... oh you cut out sorry oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> Bye. You're welcome. Yep. Bye, bye, guys. <laughs>